next job to take care of on the bag violin is the varnish work. Now this violin has seen a hard life. There's a lot of knocks and bangs and scrapes and all sorts going on with the varnish. I want to pre preserve the patina and keep some of the um, history, but I do want it to look a bit nicer than it does. You'll see there's some shiny bits on the front here at the moment. I have been starting to put some varnish filler in the places on the varnish where it's really pitted because I need to fill those gaps in before I can retouch the surface. So because it takes a while to dry, I thought I'd get ahead and just start filling in with the filler, just these little bits of varnish on the front. But the job I want to turn my attention to today is the neck. The neck seems to have a layer of varnish or lacquer or something on it. This is not correct. It should just be bare wood with a Danish oil finish, which can be coloured, um, and this, this isn't. So when you slide your hand up and down, if you're changing in position on this violin, it feels slippery and it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it should. So I always preserve where I can, but as this is not correct, I'm going to remove this layer of varnish and sort out the edges of the fingerboard. The fingerboard just seems to be a bit oversized, it just doesn't seem to fit the neck very well, so I may just have to adjust that a little bit, taking off the smallest amount of wood possible. So first things first, I'm going to just take my scraper, I'm going to scrape along the edge of this uh, fingerboard where it hits the neck and just get rid of some of that lip where it shouldn't be there. I need to be careful not to touch the fingerboard while I'm doing this, but this is the quickest way I've found of just getting off the ebony. I want the widest part of the fingerboard curve here, about in the middle of this ebony, I, th I suppose. I want the top bit to curve in so it's slightly, slightly thinner. So the middle of the curve comes on the middle of the fingerboard, I guess, really. And this doesn't feel right at all this side, so I might just have to do a bit more reshaping. Well, that was a lot more wood than I thought it was going to be that there was excess on there but it feels a lot better now this is the really important part actually so if you're playing an, an instrument it needs to feel right um, so I do spend a lot of time on necks but that feels much better I might just take a little bit more off here and then I'm going to get my sandpaper on the whole neck and just get rid of that varnish that shouldn't be there as usual I'm starting with 150 grit and then heading down to a thousand grit and I might go finer than that to get a really good surface on it. I've got a fine emery paper now that I'm just giving the final surface to the neck with. It took some doing but it feels really beautifully smooth now. And I think that'd be lovely to play. You can't feel the join between the fingerboard and the neck which is what I want but because of all the sanding on the edges of the fingerboard, the edges here at the top feel a little bit too harsh. So I'm just going to take a bit of 400 grit, I think, uh, if I can find it, there it is, and just put it on a flat block and just do a little chamfer on the edges just to curve them off a little bit and make it even nicer to play. So the last thing to do today is to get some Danish oil and just give it a couple of coats of Danish oil just to finish it off. Danish oil is impervious to things like sweat when you're playing and it just keeps a really good seal on the wood. So I would use this on new instruments as well. I'd colour it on new instruments. I don't think I'm going to on the bag violin because it's already got quite a nice um, colour to the wood and I love how the Danish oil goes on. It just makes everything look instantly better. Lovely. That's one nice playing surface and fingerboard now with a lovely feeling neck. I'll give it another couple of coats and then that's that done. Next time it'll be on to the varnish work.